I'm Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Here we go with part two with Dave Sebastian Williams. Are you ready? So, so, okay. so, so I want to get back okay. to the business okay. thing here. Yes. So for people out there, mm -hmm. I mean, because I really feel that today, you know, years ago you can get away with maybe not knowing the too much of the business side and, and you know, just walk into somebody's out office and be good at what you do <clears throat> and things would happen. But I think that nowadays you really need to be a little bit more business minded uh, if you I want think. opportunities to I come think. your way. So how, how can somebody out there who, who's in the voiceover business, what are some tips maybe you can give them to grab a hold of their business side? You know, a few things that they might be able to do. Go to as many workshops as you can go to because in those workshops you'll talk to other people during that sort of downtime or that rehearsal time. You'll stand outside, you'll hear words. Uh, I'll go back to one of my early days when I was going to radio school yeah. to get my first class license in, for radio, something that's not needed today, but was then. And fellas would talk about, a couple of guys had already been on the air. Yeah. And they would say, I'd come out of this PSA. And I said, and I think to myself, PSA? PSA, PSA the guy's from Colorado. He's, they don't have PSA Airlines in Colorado. I didn't understand PSA stood for Public Service, service Announcement. Yeah. But before I finished that schooling, that six or eight weeks, whatever it was, to get my ticket, I'd understood uh, the vernacular of radio. So when I went to a radio station to apply or oh, sent a yeah. note off to a radio station to apply, I would use some of that vernacular. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all learning what happens. You, I can tell very quickly when I get someone on the phone, they call the Dave and Dave Studios, I immediately, I know where they are in their learning curve of the industry. Mm -hmm. You can hear it almost instantly. Yeah. They use the correct words, you give them a little, you give them, you know. You give them a discount. A yeah. <laughs> if they don't use the I, correct lingo, I send them to Chuck. they pay double. <laughs> yeah, he sends them to me. Oh but my God. It, it's, you, you have to think about and mix yourself with those people that are already doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And those people that want to do it. Because there will be a couple of people in your group that are just doing it to eat up time in the day. I mean, I'd rather surround myself with millionaires. Yeah. I, I don't have many. But I, and in voiceover, I do. I yeah. have a lot of voiceover millionaire friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's nice to surround yourself with those guys or gals because they know the business. Yeah. How, why? Why do you think, or how did the, they come about yeah, that the money? And yeah. How did yeah. that happen? Yeah, you they, know? yeah. In most cases, when you make a million dollars in the voiceover business, it's not by accident. That's right. No, yeah. but to it, always have people that are that you can emulate and they can push you yeah. and you can motivate each other. That's really important. Absolutely, it's, it's probably best not to hang around two guys that are hanging around the Seven Eleven yep. on a regular basis. Exactly. Hang around people that are successful. Mm -hmm. Hang around people that are learning their craft. Yeah. Hang around workshops, teachers. Go to as many as you can. I was very fortunate during my radio years that it paid for all that. Yeah. I mean, I, I, and, and that's one of the reasons why I now give back to actors so often. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, literally, we've put together full packages, you know, 100 CDs and such for an actor who was living in his car. He used to sleep out back of the old Dave and Dave. Yeah. And now he's a working, working, working actor. Yeah. But, yeah. and I knew he had chops and had skills he just had to Need have that opportunity, yeah. the opportunity you know man. and, well, he, and you're he a couldn't sweet get an kid, agent man. without it you are without a sweet that kid. cd you well know? Yeah. speaking of giving back <laughs> yes. you have been giving back in many many ways but in a truly significant way for 25 years with the what we call the voiceover bible yes the okay. voiceover resource guide well it uh, and voiceover resource guide.com for for our I used to put scripture Friends in all it, over the world that but don't have no the longer. Hard copy. Yeah, yeah. We want to know how that whole okay. thing started it, and how it evolved okay. to what it is today. Let's go back to Bob Lloyd. Bob Lloyd. My, my guru I back in we the day. I thought we were going to go back to Don yeah. Pitts. I got scared. Yeah. No, 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 Bob no, no, Lloyd, no. the guy that you made okay. the list Pitts, with, he offers this more and we offer this. that, right? Yeah. Bob Lloyd, who you ticked off for 10 yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm in the lobby years <laughs> earlier or later. I'm not sure when earlier. I'm in the lobby at Bob Lloyd's and I had in my back pocket a list of all the offices in town that cast and all the ad agencies and such. I'm finishing a, an audition and there's a pay phone at Bob Lloyd's, call the agent. I had a beeper back in those days. You had to have a beeper, call the agent. The agent said, you got an audition at such and such. Do you have the address? And I said, yeah, yeah. of course I do. 
yeah, I'll see you later. Goodbye. Or whatever. And other people, you know, sniffing into my phone call. Yeah, going of like... Of course. They, what, what's that list hey, you have you there? Where'd you get that? Where'd you, yeah. What's that? Yeah. So I started making copies and handing it out to people. And then I thought, I would go ahead and maybe do something like this. Oh, a pamphlet. I'd make this up. Oh, so wow. I made this up, paid for it myself, did 500 a 1000 something like that, uh, over a period of time. The only advertisement on it was... For my companies, I was making of cassette dubs, yeah. of course, and I put a all oh, the printer, a pr yeah, you have to put good, the yes. printers ad in yeah. there, and there were no ads. And for years, I did this, and we updated this. You know, I make the calls. Can and I see that? Yeah, it has, you know, the so it had rates. the session rates. Yeah. Uh, recording studios, mm -hmm. all the recording studios in town, voiceover workshops. Yeah. Right. Wow. What a tiny little Agency. list back then, yeah. right? Agencies voice and voice mm -hmm. casting services. Wow. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yep. And then we moved to something like this. Mm -hmm. We went to advertising. Yes. Years later. And we took ads. People would place ads. Hmm? Yeah. See? See the ads? Yep. Okay. They would place ads. And then we went to more full color. And this happens to have all of our Vorg covers on nice, in the background. Nice. Yeah, so that's it, a cool cover. So that's kind of cool for me. That yeah. was kind of yeah, yeah, cool yeah. to say, yeah, I think we can fill this sucker up with yeah. our covers. <laughs> that's kind of cool. And then, of course, the just about year. six months ago, mm -hmm. we hit our 25th year. Yeah. And this is the current issue, which I see you have on the table yes, there we as do. well. The current issue of the board. I have never... And I, I don't want to make it about us had, for a second, yeah, yeah, yeah. but, you know... Mm. Uh, this is as close as I'll come to doing a centerfold. We're kind of... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Mom and Dad, this is it. Okay. That's it. That's yeah. the deal. Oh, right there. We, we love it. It's amazing. I have one in my car. I have one in my home studio. Yeah. I mean, I, I and, always use this. And I knew we had made it when I'm driving down Sunset Boulevard one day years ago, and I see hanging from their mirror yeah. our Vork. Mm. And I'm nice. just thinking... Wow, this is kind of interesting. The guy's hanging, not dice, our Vorg, on his mirror. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess it's good. Yeah. I guess it's, I guess we've yeah. sort of made it. You it's know? not good, buddy. It's great. Yeah. I mean, every I, time, we, if I go to an industry function or yeah. a big seminar or anything like that, whenever anybody talks about any kind of publication that has to do with voiceover, that's what they mention. Yeah, right. Right. Everywhere I go in the industry, Absolutely. every workshop that I, or, you know, I think we've been on a dais or two yep. at yes. SAG or AFTRA. And, of course, yeah. that's what they talk about. Yeah. Well, and, and I just want to say for our helpful. viewers that are all over the world that can't get the hard copy, <clears throat> voiceoverresourceguide.com. They can access everything that's in yes. here and then some yes. online. Yeah. Also online. Yeah. yeah. We went online about six, seven years ago. Yeah, and I know that you. There's also some uh, Voice of a Resource Guide, uh, New York. Yes, we're uh, I, we're we're expanding. very close to expanding to New York, and I have an idea. I've kind of taken an idea from another magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to get into it, but it's. Yeah, yeah. I think it will show that we're L.A. We're bi-coastal, if you will. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love it. It, Good it, idea. It's going to be terrific. Well, when you're ready I, to talk about that, we'll. Uh, yeah, we'll I think have it'll you be back soon. When New York I think, comes out, no, we'll I think it's going to be within the next six to nine months. It, it will be in print, hopefully. Beautiful. I'd like to do a at least in the beginning a newsstand version for both coasts. Yeah. And then, of course, it will always be on the web. Mm -hmm. The yeah. web we've kind of trickled into. Some of it's on the web yeah. for New York, but we need the outskirts, the surrounding areas right. of New York, right. yeah. because there are a lot of other pockets in the country, and we need Dallas and Atlanta and places like that. Voiceover happens everywhere, and voiceover people now are everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Real yes. good working voiceover <laughs> actors. They don't have to stay here any longer. Yeah, right. they don't have to be New York or LA. As we know. Yeah, right. we have because because of ISDN, because of Dave and Dave. They connect with us, there you and go. we're all good. Exactly, we're good to go. Yeah, and home studios all yeah. over, mm -hmm. all across uh, America. Yeah. And and we've done easily a hundred home studios. And uh, for people, I mean, even today we were talking to someone about doing his re, you know, just helping people out. I yeah, just yeah, want yeah. them. I want everyone that is hoping to work in the voiceover business to have the knowledge because, as I used to say in my workshops, you, m I know about 6,000, let's say, uh, producers in Los Angeles. I've worked for half of them. 
I want to work for the other half. And if you go in and screw it up for me working by not knowing something in the voiceover business and they haven't worked with me, they may never work with me because they're right. afraid of working with people they haven't worked with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They liked and re recurring businesses. Yeah, yeah. I that's mean, that's the, the dream. Yes. And yes. it's because Education we're good important. at what we do, but also we're nice people. We're giving, we're, you know, it's. So speaking of return business, which you yes. have a lot of, thank goodness. Yes. When you get copy for a commercial mm -hmm. or a promo, yeah. how do you, what is your process of breaking it down or what do you go through? As an actor? Mm -hmm. Before you are like, okay, I'm ready to record. That's a good question. Well, okay. Thanks, Chuck. You. Okay, first thing. He has a good answer, and, too. And first thing is you read everything on all sides of whatever piece of paper is handed to you at any audition. <laughs> all sides. You read everything. If a script's given to you, read it front to back. Mark all things that are your part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All of it. Mark it. And the reason I say that is, there I am on the set shooting a newsman i'm i'm the newsman at the desk and they're doing the big this is scene on camera on camera mm. they're shooting the big scene in the other office they come to me for a quick insert let's just do dave now boom here's camera spins around they've got the panavision right up my nose and i'm sitting at the desk and he says okay great action and so i spiel it off and da, 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 da. and he says okay move on to page 2 <gasps> I swear to God, I hadn't seen it. I had not seen it. You have to read everything on the page. Everything. Every little thing gives you a clue. Revisions. It's the 19th revision. So don't ask silly questions like, can I move this word around? No, they've beaten this sucker into the ground. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they have hurt people yeah, working this out. Exactly. They have lived with they this. Will kill you they have kill you. They have lived with these around. words. I can't tell you how long they live with the words long before they get to us. Yeah. And that's why very often we hear as casting, we can't send you copy yet because it's not hammered out yet. No, yeah. they've been hammering it for a long. It's so important that the right piece of copy goes out sometimes for them. I sure. think it really isn't important to hear someone read the piece of copy as a casting situation, but it's important to them because they've been beating every word out of this yeah. thing. Okay, so the first thing I do is I read everything on the page. And uh, the length, very important. Yes. Uh, whether or not there's a tag, uh, and it may say uh, 55 plus 5. So now it says 60, but in some place on the copy it says 55 plus 5. You know you've got a 55. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you're not doing 60. You don't have 60. Try to do it. Try to do it in their time. Very often overwritten in the beginning for the casting. But then I say read it all to yourself. Without moving your lips, read it all to yourself. And why without moving your lips? Because you'll get to that next. You, okay. get, to, you get to intellectualize about the copy next. After you read it all and write down some things like why, who, what, where, when, who am I, who am I talking to, why am I convincing them, what's the thrust of this commercial, why are they trying to come from this angle when they could come from this angle. Nope, they've chosen this one. So write some little things down and then try to get two pieces of that copy. Particularly, and this used to really come into play when you go to an audition. If you go to an audition house, get two pieces of the copy and write down different things, different direction for yourself on the other piece. So you're not struggling with the same marks mm -hmm. and a little hieroglyphics over words and underlines and circles. Yeah. On one piece, you have a second piece. Okay, now I'm going to do George Burns, whatever, on that piece of copy. This one, I was doing Zelda Smith. Now I'm doing George Burns doing this piece of copy. So I write George Burns on it, which then I don't have to look at the other piece of copy. Right, right. And George Burns underlines differently. He underlines and circles different words on that page. Then, after you've done all that, and this is all silently, yeah. then kind of, kind of intellectualize the piece of copy. Well, I was walking down the street the other day, and I was saying, well, I, <clears throat> no, uh, well, I was walking down the street the other day. Oh, it's a street. There's a, a very important street in, in this piece of copy. I was walking down the street the other day. I was walking down the street the other day. How do I want to say that? Yeah. Okay. And you rehearse it like that, just kind of mumbling to yourself and kind of figuring it all out. Then 
okay, I've made my decisions, I've done the extra markings, and that's all that little mumbling with your lips moving, I was walking yeah, yeah. down the street, and then do it at performance level from then on. Right. Mm -hmm. And do it at performance level always from then on. If you're in the booth and they give you direction, happens every single time, Yeah. to myself included, every time. Yeah. If they give you direction, be sure to take that direction and rehearse it just a little bit. You don't have to rehearse it on mic. Rehearse it this far off. They know you're rehearsing. They love rehearsal. Trust me, they do, because they know when you come back on, you're, gonna you're not it. gonna be rehearsing on mic. You rehearsed over here. You're gonna be performing on mic. So perform on mic. Rehearse off mic, just step off. They know if you move off mic this far, you're <laughs> way off mic. Yeah. So, <laughs> so they know you're off yeah, mic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So at that point, you step back after you've rehearsed it. They will give you a line read sometimes. You need to hear that line read come out of your mouth at performance level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't do this. Oh, that's For people that may not know what a line read is, Dave, mm -hmm. what, what is a line uh, read? A line read is the director will say, I'd like it read like this. She was walking down the street the other day. Okay, great. Don't say, okay, great. Right. Do it. Right. <laughs> Do it yeah. because okay, great is I'm good, aren't I? Yeah, I can do it. Yeah, ninety percent of the time you can't do right. it. You're going to rehearse it in that next live take. Yeah, and as you're approaching that area where she was walking down the street the other day, as you're approaching that area in the copy, you're going to start thinking about how he said it to you or she. And it's too late. You've screwed. You've <laughs> yeah, screwed you the forgot, pooch. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's happened. Yeah. You've messed up the copy mm -hmm. because you're not now in touch and in focus on that copy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So rehearse it off mic once, just once anyway. And if it's not right, rehearse it three times until mm -hmm. you're comfortable with it. Yeah. They'll allow you to do that. Then move back on mic or on camera to do it. When I used to go out for aud auditions on camera, if I didn't like my take, I'd fall to the floor. Yeah. They'd have to burn that take. They couldn't send that to a client. <laughs> oh, no, God, I'd just fall out of frame. <laughs> I'd fall out of frame. If I hated my take, I'd buy it. I'd Throw hit the, the camera. I'd the walk tape. right up to the camera and do this. Yeah, <laughs> oh, why not? They're never going to send that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't want them to send it? No, Crap no. on it. <laughs> just bury it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> not enough people. That's the motto today. If you don't like it, crap on it. There you go. Uh, not enough people, they don't feel strong enough about their good work that mm -hmm. that's all they want to leave behind. Yeah. They're afraid. Don't be afraid in there. It's your room. So, Dave. Yes. You have seen mm -hmm. quite an evolution of change in the business. What changes are you really excited about, and what are some that you think are maybe not the best? You have to have an opinion. Well, on that. The, the most important thing to me is, <laughs> a, a, as an actor, I want to talk to the guy and shake hands with, and have that person direct me, yeah. mm -hmm. and not not be in my studio alone, away from my agents who could direct me as well. Um, I'd like that one on one. Yeah. That's when I personally did better, I yeah. think. Mm -hmm. uh, some of what I do now, I'm my own worst coach. Um, Is self-directing difficult for you? Know, you? It's, it's always difficult. Yeah. And, and particularly since I have the wherewithal to run the equipment as well, from time to time, we have other things going on in the studios and I'll just jump into a room, I'll hit play and record, like a lot of guys have to do and gals have to do now at home, because many agents don't allow them to come to the agent's office, uh, and running and I'm the engineer and the thing, and, mm -hmm. and I'm cutting in my head, I'm editing, I'm thinking, well, I'll go with that take, and I'll, uh, okay, now uh, take two, uh, uh, yeah. you know, I'm starting to think of all those things when I should just walk in and just yeah, do it. Yeah, exactly. You know, so you miss the, inter go the human interaction I've with missed your that agents and directors. tremendously. That's uh, the biggest missing yeah. cog, mm -hmm. if you will, yeah. in yeah, this I, industry. I, I, I would agree I with like, that, definitely. I, yeah, it's I like very that uncomfortable. Audience to be away from people. Yeah. It's lovely when you finally get a job and you get to actually talk to someone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and then Exactly. Even now they're at some distance. Yeah, they're on a phone right. or something. Yeah, right. very often. <laughs> no, but I mean, we're performers and it's it's nice to have an audience. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. it's a 
I, I like it. Yeah. What are what are some changes that you actually like? Improvements. If any. oh, I th I think some of the <laughs> if some any. of the technical part is is wonderful. Yeah. I mean, it's mm -hmm. beyond wonderful. What what we can do now. I used to walk around with a razor blade, you know, the single sided razor blade in my mouth all day long. I mean, strangely. I'd walk around with that at the radio station because I'd be cutting. You'd be slicing no, tape. No, no, I'm, and I'd have tape yeah. around my head, you know. <laughs> it, the technical part of it is wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful yeah. that we can do so many things so quickly. Yeah. It gives us, you know, when I transitioned from reel to reel, let's say, oh, gosh. In, in, in teaching Just that workshops, right yeah, teaching the workshop and recording people and recording people's demos, when I transitioned from that and trying to sell my services to the uh, DAWs, digital audio workstations, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when I transferred to that, now it's all on straight up a computer, but when I transferred to that, I thought, how I can do so, so many things so fast. Yeah. How can I charge? How can I make any money at yeah, this? Yeah, it's like, but, yeah. but the fact take is, two minutes. <laughs> you have more choices yeah. over here. Mm -hmm. You've had more bells and whistles, more things to play with. Yeah. So that helped our business. Exactly. You know, the, the studio business. Uh, that, I think, is a wonderful thing that's happened. It re I, I, really I is, don't, man. I don't envy the actor that doesn't get it. See, I grew up with it, mm -hmm. in, being a musician and, and working at radio stations. I grew up in that sort of understanding the path of audio and things of that yeah. nature. Not the best at it, but... I understand it to some degree. Yeah. I, I can always figure out a workaround if it's not working for me. Yeah. But the poor folks, the actors, that want to be actors and only actors, to have to do that from home, it's tough. Yeah. It's very it's tough. tough on them. I know. Well, even Stacy, when she's going to do something that she feels, you know, really is uh, important or something yeah. like that, she'll be like, honey... <laughs> yeah. like, you want me to direct you well, on this? He's like, well, I like yeah. it. I love it. But well, the thing is, but is that's that why that. that's she, why Dave and Dave offers I know five dollar auditions. I know. Yeah, exactly. Now, but you at midnight, the, you're not open. <laughs> yeah, you that's true. You're not open at midnight, Dave. That's the only that. flaw <laughs> that you have going on. You have twenty four hour service, and then you'll be freaking. I know. Sometimes oh, look, it's like eleven I'm or twelve o'clock. Hey, let's have a little cheers here. Hey, Salud. Here's to yes. you and your here's business to, and here's your to beautiful me winning wife. the lottery, yes. like I talked about, yes. and keeping it open 24/7. I know, and well, and keeping Cafe Dave full of Twinkies as well. Get down, woo. Um, okay, Dave, what are you for free? What are you for most free. grateful for in your life at this point, where you are today? And you can take 20 seconds. To think I think about my it. health. Your mm. health. Okay. Well, we need that, no, uh, but. You know, I, I have a lot of friends that, and, and very talented friends that didn't live as long as mm. that, that I have lived. And um, some that have lived longer uh, and that have taught me a lot of things in their senior years. But I think the most important thing is our health. And yeah. we have to somewhat focus on that and know our own bodies and know what we can do and what we can't do and take care of ourselves that way. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's I think great. that's the most important thing. It's a really important thing. And you know what? My most important thing, no, no, but I have to say this. I've been in the, in the voiceover business not as long as you have, but for over 20 years. And I have to say that what you have done and your wife and what you guys have brought in with Dave and Dave Recording Studios and with the voiceover resource guide, mm -hmm. you have literally made my life so much easier wow. and so many other people's that I have to just thank you and give well, you a big handshake for, for doing it, that, man. It is a, it's a work of love. Yes. Uh, there's no question about it. That's the philosophy where it started. I wanted to help other people. Um, and people forced me into taking advertising, literally forced me into it. Mm -hmm. They just kept calling saying, we, I've got to advertise in there. Yeah. I've got to advertise. No, it's a free listing. No, no, I have to advertise. Yeah. You know, so eventually it moved to full color and I'm, we're going to try to keep that. And, yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's an fabulous. expensive venture, but yeah. it fills that void for those actors. I've often said in a sliding, deprecating sort of way, it's the best keep away from me tool in the business. You know, well, what about voiceover? Here, keep away from me. <laughs> uh, you know, as, yeah. as some would say, I don't want any more people in the voiceover mm -hmm. business. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's enough work, or not enough work to go around for all of us right now. There's a lot of work, yeah. way more than there was 25 years ago. Sure. Way more work. Yeah. And 
we just don't need many more actors. But it's a cottage industry, our, our voiceover guide is. Yeah. It's created an industry unto itself. And it's actually moved our industry up in the whole genre of acting. And, you know, oh, yeah, man. You know uh, being a disc jockey uh, was like the lowest rung on the, mm -hmm. uh, on the you know, entertainment, you know. But it, voiceover was non-existent. Yeah. Now yeah. voiceover is up there somewhere. Yeah. It's up yeah, there with every actors. Every celebrity yeah. wants to do voiceover. Yeah, no question about it. You know, they it's, want like to the, it's like the cool thing to and do. And they probably should do voiceover, except, you know, taking my jobs. Yeah. yeah. I think that celebrities should only do voiceover when it comes to on camera. Yeah. But if it's just voice, they should leave it to a voice actor. There, that's, that's my that's, right. that's my theory. That's right. But we know why they <laughs> they trot they trot out, excuse the expression, the celebrity for their conventions and for different events, yeah. uh, maybe a golf event or something of that nature. They'll bring the celebrity out as well yeah. and treat the celebrity as they should be treated, like a celebrity. Uh, but they use them to then sell more widgets. You know, yeah. Yeah. I get to take a picture with the celebrity and then I go back to Des Moines and I will sell more widgets. Uh, or we'll tell another guy in the office, hey, look, my picture, you could sell more widgets. You could go meet uh, Sir Lancelot, whoever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not very good with names, you know. But I like the names that you come current, up with. Uh, They're reference. freaking awesome. Matt Damon, Sir Lancelot. Yeah. Very oh good, Dave. And You're Herschel on the Fenork. pulse, baby. You're on the pulse. Herschel Fenork is one of my favorite names. Herschel Fenork? Her yeah, Herschel, Herschel Fenork. Herschel Fenork. Yeah, married to Gretchen Prunes. Gretchen Prunes. Now, these are stolen from different people. <laughs> and think, you know, Gretchen Prunes. And the twins... <laughs> Oh. Murine and Visine. Murine? <laughs> Murine and Visine. Yeah, the twins. Oh, yeah. I love you, okay. Dave. Oh, I love right. you. Yeah, I know. Um, are we done? We're done. Dude, oh, God. Thank you for coming on Vio uh, Buzz it's a Weekly. Pleasure. My I pleasure. I love you to death. It's so I wonderful to be here. here. It's very intimate in this room. It is. With the two it's of nice you. and chilly well, and very cozy. Well, between Vio Buzz Weekly and the voice of a resource guide, boom, you're That's covered. it. We're done. Hi, this is Dave Sebastian Williams from Dave and Dave, and I just got buzzed, and I mean it. This is VO. Buzzed with Chuck and Stacy, and I'm loving it, and I hope you learned something, and I hope you enjoyed the moment. Thanks for coming by. Really? No. Well, that's all we have for you today. We hope you guys have had a good time here meeting our friend Dave Sebastian Williams. Be back next week for another great episode of VO Buzz Weekly. And in between then, keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest at VO Buzz Weekly. You guys take care until next time, and just remember, you, you always, always have time, time for a little buzz. buzz.